Uh, my name is Charles Kraft. I'm an artist and what I do is make ceramic objects and the objects relate to uh, memorials for the deceased and to weaponry. I do this uh, memorializing of the deceased using um, human bone china, which is a, a substance that um, I sort of hit upon as I was researching um, the history of, of uh, china making. What we're going to do today is we're going to use some of um, this fellow. His name is Warner uh, Lindholm. He was born in 1929 and he died in last year, 2006. And he was a very good friend of mine. He came to the decision before he died that he would like to be memorialized by me in the form of a Tibetan uh, Buddhist Vajra. He, uh, Warner was my neighbor. He lived in the neighborhood and he used to come over here and, and uh, like visit with me on a weekly basis, sometimes, you know, twice a week. And, and we used to like to walk a lot together. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put uh, Warner's, some of Warner's uh, ashes that I've, I, I've prepared in, in, in this uh, bowl milling machine because I have to have a finer powder, well I don't really, but I like it, a finer powder than this. People come to me with the ashes of their dead uh, uh, family members or friends and they, they, they bring me the idea. I don't really... Um, impose my idea on them because they have an idea when they come to me and the widow of this particular person wanted a Ganesh because uh, her husband had, was particularly fond of this this Indian um, god, Hindu. Friends of this fellow, David McCann, they brought me his ashes and they said David was a heavy drinker and if he were alive and uh, to appreciate it he would like to have his remains reconstituted as a vodka bottle so I did it you know they, they brought me the idea about doing a vodka bottle for David and uh, I, I just followed through with it because that was what they ordered this is a uh, dr. Robert Thornberry he's a veterinarian his son brought me um, his ashes and requested that I make him into a bulldog see like these didn't get chopped up oh look Here's something. See that? That's a staple, and I don't know what that's about, but that was in the ash content. I used crematory ash in, in a porcelain clay body to slip cast um, memorial objects that act as reliquaries to contain the ash that is actually a part of the piece itself. Form and function is kind of this dogmatic thing when you when you enter ceramics. And then there's my ceramics, which are non-functional, and um, the craftsmanship isn't really up to snuff because I don't know what I'm doing lots of the time, and um, I didn't go to school to learn it, and I don't care about glaze chemistry, and I don't care about clay body chemistry, and, and um, I, I broke through into that world with, with the disaster wear, and so I got some attention there because I was doing something different. This is the kind of thing that everybody's used to. Here's the guy that invented the Boy Scouts, Sir Baden Powell. Well, I, I, I wanted to do something totally different. And here's a guy getting beaten to death in a bed. <laughs> right? Things have thickened up significantly. And um, what I need to do is I got to get some uh, deflocculant to, to make it more fluid. Be frank with you. Um, I become an employee of this idea, <laughs> and uh, there's a demand for what I make. And so, when there's a demand, this is my livelihood. So I have to meet the demand, and I've just sort of been um, obliged to continue to reproduce 
the disaster wear and the spawn reliquaries that, that I, I made. It's been sitting up and we don't use it all because the Vajra is going to be hollow. So what has happened in the mold is that a skin has built up. And um, I'm going to pour what I don't need back into the... It plops. Because I get the mixture too thick. But I've always just been a little bit odd. You know, even when I was a kid, I was my interests were just a little bit different than average. And for some reason, I'm a born um, smart aleck. And uh, I can't take anything seriously. And part of the what I do is kind of a cynical satire. There. See that? That's that. I mean, there's cynicism and there's satire in it. So it's actually kind of really uh, black comedy is what I'm up to. And uh, that's the way I've been since I was a kid. And if you ever talk to anybody that knew me when I was six years old, I was doing the same stuff back then that I'm doing now. It's a progressive kind of um, exploration of, uh, of a medium with this idea of trying to push the envelope of what you're used to from that media. I, I don't want to make myself sound like some you know, super oddball because I'm not. I live a very ordinary life. But um, I am an artist and I am curious and I've been able to um, take my curiosity and make a living from it. This is the secret. It's tracing. So, the pattern's been transferred. It takes a little bit of steadiness. He was very curious about uh, spiritual things, and he had studied a lot, and he ended up dying a Buddhist. I'm a little bit ahead of the curve on things, and I always have been, on fads and um, the zeitgeist. And um, so I, I've watched uh, people take my idea about conceptual ceramics to another level. Now this is going to turn blue. When we when we see this again, it'll be. Blue. Let me stop the camera. 1816 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> okay, so after the uh, glaze firing, the black that I applied to the surface turns cobalt blue and you got the uh, this is a uh, mantra Om Mane Padme Hum Tibetan mantra what I'm going to do is this is these are the, the ash of Warner that I didn't use this is what comes out of the oven after he was reduced to ash uh, I'm going to spoon it in there and I'm going to Put the cap on, and uh, that will be Warner's uh, Warner's resting final resting place. The final wish of Warner completed. I haven't ever received a, a critically, you know, a critic has never actually taken me out for what I do. I mean, and, you know, art criticism is a kind of a, a, a literature of its own, and it's got it its own parameters and people that are critics um, practice a certain style of criticism, right? Theor theoretical criticism. I, I've never been attacked in print. I've had people tell, you know, tell me that they were offended by um, some of the imagery that I use, like the swastika. Uh, I've had to do a lot of explaining on the spot when people want to know why I'm involved in that kind of imagery. So yeah, you know, I've, I, I've had some negative reactions from from viewers, but I've never had a professional critic just say this guy's what he's doing is awful. Mm -hmm.